Okay, so today, I think today we'll be looking at uh, the book, uh, which is basically debugging, because we are going to see uh, how the main, the main idea behind this is we are going to explore when we encounter error uh, in our code, how are we going to uh, debug using traceback, uh, using browser, using breakpoints. We are going to see how we are going to use that uh, to resolve our codes. So basically, in the chapter, the chapter first of all uh, starts uh, with this kind of uh, uh, motivating statement that uh, finding bug in code is a process of confirming the many things that we believe are true until we find out one which is not true because that is mainly how uh, when we're working with code, maybe we go through the ser uh, series of, we can have series of scripts. We are, we are going to step into each line one by one until we actually we discover uh, the offending line that is giving us issue uh, when working with code. So the book kind of explain like uh, strategies in which we, we are going to follow uh, when, when, we are, when we encounter error uh, in our code. And the first uh, of those strategies in which they explain in the book is Google, because Google is always a key. It's always key in this process because uh, where, while I was still learning R then, each error in which I encounter, the first thing I do is for me to just uh, copy that error and paste it in Google. Definitely, I'm going to come up, I'm going to discover, uh, be able to, to resolve, to fix this error. And in the book also make mention of this very good package. I was not aware uh, of this package uh, before I took of the chapter, I think you talk about the, this error risk package. If I go through here, I think this is the this is a source code uh, from GitHub. Automatic error and warning search when working with the R code. I think uh, they also they also have a GIF here. So what it, this package does is that first of all, at the beginning of the call, we need to load the live. We need to after installing the package, we need to just load uh, the library of errors. So once we are working with our code, each error in which we encounter, uh, definitely R is going to, once our internet connection is on, R is going to automatically take us to Google, where we are going to see, uh, where we are going to see various uh, ways in which we can be able to what, fix, uh, we can be able to fix uh, that problem. So in the second uh, strategy, in which they kind of explain in the book is that we should try as much as possible to make it repeatable. So and uh, make it repeatable means that, that means we need to ensure that we make our code uh, to be reproducible. That is, we should find the root cause of an error. You are going to need to execute the code many times as you consider any, consider and reject hypothesis because we need to, we need to reduce this code uh, into, into, into the minimals in, in which in that process we, may, we might even discover and then how we can fix it. And in the next six parts, they also talk about fix it, which figure we should figure out where it is. So how do we figure out uh, where uh, this error is? It's just, uh, they do explain that it's just like our normal experiments in which we are doing, we need to watch, first of all, uh, we need to generate hypothesis, we need to design the experiment, we test them, and then we, we, we record uh, our, our result. They, they do explain that we should follow also this step when, we, when, dealing, when dealing with our code. So in, in such a way that we are, we, we are going to be able to what, figure out uh, in order for us to what, fix uh, this problem. The next is they said fix it and test it. That is, we have to ensure that after fixing this problem, we need to what run tests on the code to make sure that things are work, uh, things work properly. In the last part here, the last part here, there's the in the book, they just mainly explain uh look how, how we can locate error uh using this traceback function because the traceback function 
it's like we have a series of uh, calls in which we are going to make. So when we run trace back on those calls, it's going to show us uh, the call stack, which is like the sequence of call that will lead us to the error. And in this example in which they explain, we are having a function of f, which is making a call to g, and g is also making a call to h, and also h is making a call to what i. So if we do, uh, if we do execute uh, this code in our execute that run the code, then we now run f of we run f of a is going to be uh, is going to result into an error. D must be what numeric and is going to give us uh, two options: show show trace back and also rerun with debug. So this show trace back. If we are working with R Studio, this is the error message in which we are going to get. So if we if we click on the show trace back, it's still going to it's going to give us uh, the sequence of calls that leads to that error, which shows that the, this is the call we made, which is f of a. This we have g of a, we have h of b, we have i of i of which could, i which 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 is the offending function that results into the error. So it's we can show that this is the main function because if we look at the call, we have i, which is a function of d. If not is dot numeric d, stop, d must be numeric. So we can see that this actually is the main offending function. So we, we, got, we are going to know that, okay, this is a function. So we, we, we have already seen, so that we can see where we are going to focus on in order for us to fix uh, that issue. So they also make mention that once we are, when we are not working uh, with our studio, we can also generate the same, we can also generate these same outputs with this function called traceback. So when we run traceback, it's still going to give us uh, the same results, which is going to show us uh, the sequence of call that will lead uh, to the error. But also, we can also rerun it, uh, rerun with debug. This is going to also, open uh, a browser in our house studio where we can step into those, those call, the sequence of call uh, that, leads, uh, that leads to the error. I think that's, that is that for the first part. I don't know if there are comments. Uh, so before we, I step into the next. Hello, should I proceed? Uh, no. Yeah, yeah, not for now, not for now, maybe later. Okay, thank you. So this other section mainly talk about uh, lazy evaluation. And they said that one drawback to traceback is that it always uh, linearizes the call tree, which can be confusing. So in this example, uh, they make, uh, make sure of the, this is a function of J, we also have another function, which is scale, which is a function, with, and this function is going to stop and it's going to er give a message. Then we have a call, call dot is equals to what false. So when we say, when we make reference, we make a call of f of j, it's going to give us this error message, error, oops, because uh, this is going to give us this error message. But when we run, when they run trace back on this call, when we run trace back on this call, this is going to show us all the sequence of calls that we have made before we arrive, before we arrive at uh, the error. Because this is the call we make. This call is making a reference to G of A that we have called earlier on. It's also called making reference to H of B, uh, I, and also J, which is a offending function that also make uh, a, a, a reference to K, which is going to what re result us uh, to, to the error in which we are having. But they also do recommend that we can use Outlang with a bot or Outlang last trace to see the call tree. We can make reference to with, with a bot or last trace is still going to give us the the, the call tree, but here if you use Alang with a bot passing the function, 
is going to show us the error ops, or we can also use the last trace, but this is going to show us that they can't, can't show last error because no error was recorded yet because we have not recorded in any error yet. So this is going to output that is going to output this that. Uh, okay, no problem, no problem. So it's going to show us this. Uh, it's going to show us this that our long last trace error can show last error because no errors was uh, recorded uh, yet. So I think an error was recorded in this call. I think it's going to give us uh, the output. Okay, so this in this part uh, is all, all about uh, interactive uh, debugger and we here we'll be looking, making references uh, to the browser and also uh, the breakpoints. So, we are going to be using the browser. It says sometimes the precise location of the error is not enough to let us track down and fix it. So in this case, we can we can use we can have a function which is g, which is a function that has only one argument called b. And within this function, we set a browser which which is going to stop and open an interactive environment in our our studio. And we have an any a of b. So if we if I do execute uh, the, this function, this G function, then I call F of 10. So this is going to take me, this is going to take me, it's going to open a browser. It's going to open a browser in my house studio. And once that browser open, we, I can begin to step into each line of those function to see what each of those lines they are doing, but I'm going to explain this in subsequent slide where I'll be explaining the browser. So I also have, they also gave us, gave another example in the book where we have G, which is a function. It has one argument. Then they have a, a if condition, if B is less than zero, then open a browser. Otherwise, if, so if that condition is fulfilled, in that case, it's going to what take us uh, to the browser. And once it's taking us to the browser, we are go just going to see uh, this symbol in our house studio browser. In a, we, once we see this, we know that actually what where we are stepping into in the function is that we are in a in an interactive R console whereby we can begin to what interact uh, uh, with our call. You know, before we discover. Uh, the function that is actually giving us issue, then we can easily re, uh, resolve it and fix it in that uh, case. So, so once we are in the interactive uh, interactive mode in the house studio, that is the browser, we are going to have this. We are going to get this. Uh, we are going to see something like this in our house studio pane, where this is the where this is next. This next, what this next does is that it ex executes the next step in the function. If you have a variable name n in our in our in our function, we need to use the the advice that we need to use print in order for us to print n in order to display its value. So this this step this works next. This works like next, but what this uh, this this does is that it step is a step is a function. It will step in that function so that you can explore it interactively. So this is going to help us to step into each of those functions that we have in our scripts in order for us to work with those uh, calls interactively. So the next one there is just like uh, after stepping into that function, the next one is, is the finish or the F. It finished the execution of the current loop of a function. Maybe we are true in those steps. So in order for us to finish, we just click on this. But if you want to continue, if you want to continue to interact with our function, we can just click on continue, which leave the interactive debugging and continue regular execution of the function. But if you want to exit the, the browser mode, 
we just need to what? Click on the stop. So once we click on the stop, it's going to execute, exit the browser mode and take us back to our regular app console, whereby we can start, uh, whether we can start uh, working with our code again. So they uh, they also. Sorry. I, uh, sorry, can I interrupt you for, for a second? If how, uh, so it, I, what I do basically to uh, where, where are these, uh, uh, these pins? How the, where are they in my eye? Okay, there, are, let me, let me do one example. Yeah, please. Let me see. Oh, let me use Jenny's example. Oh, I think Gladys. Oh, oh fruits. Oh. Okay, so this this is it. Hello. Okay. Okay. So okay. once so, once we just click, I just click fruit average call from fruit average. It will take me to the browser. So this is the next. Okay, this uh -huh. one will help us to step into the current function call, which and the keyboard shortcut is Shift mm -hmm. plus F four. This one is to go execute the next line of the code, which is or the keyboard shortcut is F10. This one is going to take us, uh, execute the remainder of the current function or loop. The keyboard shortcut is shift, shift plus F7. This one is to continue execution until the next breakpoint is encountered. Then this one will stop and take us out. So when we are here, we can just say list to see all the lists. You can say we have, we have that, we have pattern, so we can just keep on interacting. We can, I can begin to step into those functions so that it will show me uh, which function. This is a function pattern X, ignore cases, so I can step into each the box pattern as dot character pattern. Then I can still step, we can see that error in grep pattern. Okay, names that arguments pattern is missing with no default so once we are doing this we can actually we are going to see oh this is a way i'm having issue in my code so that we can now easily go there and we just fix it then we continue then when we are through with all this we can just stop this it will take us to our regular our console so let okay. me go back if, uh, no, sorry, what if you do just browser, uh, 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 just the function browser? Yes, browser is, browser is still going to work. Yeah, browser but will, will it, it's, it will open the browser, it will open the browser, which is still an interactive environment then. It's also another option. Okay, but you don't have the pins. Uh, if you want to go out from the browser, if you, if you can, can you can you like type browser uh, uh, yes. the function in the there in the console and then uh, click enter. Okay, browser. Yeah. I, th I think uh, yeah the second function. Yes. This is browser. It will still take me to the browser. Ah, okay. Yeah, but you don't. The, uh, as you, you, can you see that you don't have the pins on top? Yes, we don't have. We don't have. We don't have those. Uh, yes, yes, yes. I see. I've seen it. But this one, let me see. If I do the list, it's still showing me the list of all the objects. But it's different. The output is different from the when we when we use. Uh, this other one, the output, but it's still, we, I can still see that I have that, I have this, I have this object, I have this object, I also have this. It's different. It's different to when I, 
when I use fruit. So when I do this, this one will give me this other debug look here. So it's different, the output is different. I don't know if uh, Trevin or Otto, anybody has more idea on why we are getting these two browser statement. Yeah, I think it, I think it depends on what environment you're in. When it's in the function, that's um, that's a different environment than the global environment. So that's why it's the two different uh, output. Okay, thank you. And if if you go, start with continue here, I think you should get the error right right away. Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So let's may go back to the notes. Uh, yep. Okay, so so this other okay alternative to browser. So here we are going to see how we use uh, breakpoints. So alternative to browser is that we can set breakpoints at some certain points in our code to stop uh, the execution of the R code at that point and it will still open the interactive environment. And the breakpoints, the keyboard shortcut, we can just use the shift plus F9. And when we set press the shift plus F9, it's going to just show a red, a red circle. So let me just go back to that same code. Let's see how the breakpoints works. So maybe I can comment this shift. Shift plus. Shift. What is it? Yeah. So once we just press our breakpoint, will be activated when the package is built and reloaded. So once, because this is a package in which she did. So Adibin is a normal function that I wrote. I can just set breakpoint. It will just show this red dot. So at that point, you know that once you are executing the code, once we get to this line, it's supposed to terminate. But in this case, it will not break because it's showing us a message that breakpoint will be activated when the package is built and reloaded because this is a package. But Adibin, this is a regular function and we set a breakpoint, so at a breakpoint, it will just stop at that point. It will kick you to an interactive uh, environment whereby we can start the same process to step into the code to see, uh, to see, to see where uh, we, are, we are having issues. And they also, they also do explain, there are a few, they also do explain that there are, there are unusual situation in which breakpoint uh, uh, break is not going to work. I think they, they, they do mention that we should look through, there is a documentation that they explain. I did not. And they also explain that our studio currently does not support a conditional breakpoint. So, conditional breakpoint whereby we can set condition that yes, if this condition is met, terminate, uh, stop the execution of this code, take us to the interactive uh, environment, just like the if statement that I showed earlier on with the browser. But when it comes to breakpoints, we cannot uh, do such, uh, the, there, is no, we, there is no room, we cannot set a conditional with uh, the breakpoints. But we can just set breakpoint, but the, the good side of this breakpoint is that uh, when we are writing the function, maybe we are working on the package. Once we push this package, we'll, because when we are using browser, 
we might make a mistake of leaving browser in our code, which will always take the user to the, but in breakpoints, nothing like that. Once we have built the package, we push it, everything is fine. We do not need to go back and delete uh, the breakpoint. Everything is fine, but in browser, we need to remove it because we only use it uh, to, to check where we're having issue in order for us uh, to, to fix it. So uh, they also uh, they also explain that we should always try as much as possible to always uh, we can also use uh, this recover to also uh, take us uh, to the interactive environment just like the browser. But in that case, we need to first of all set options on error is equals to what recover. So once we set this, this is going to override the initial default of our studio, which is options error is equals to null. So this is going to override that. So once we now check this f of x, it's going to say error, d must be numeric, and it's going to what? Take us to interactive environment, but when we now look at uh, the call stack, when we look at the, the sequence of calls that, uh, that actually take us to the error, we can see we have f of x, Debugging R by one G of A, H of B, and I of C. So it's now going to show us uh, this uh, sequence. It's going to show us uh, the sequence. Then I also they also explain we, uh, we can we can override this by setting options error is equals to null. So once we set options error is equals to null, in that case. Uh, we are going to override it. It's going to go back to the initial default settings of our studio. So anytime. So another options in which they explain in the book is by using this debug and, and it's for us to use this debug and on debug to debug, which will still take us uh, to the it's still, it's still going to take us uh, to the interactive uh, our studio environment where we can easily, it's going to open the browser where we, we can begin to explore the, uh, our code, but we can also set it to on the box. So on the box is to terminate it, but they also alternatively, they also explain we can make use of this debuggers to to browse only on the next run of the call. So, so when we look, when I look at uh, the documentation for, for this, when I look at the documentation for this, let's see what is saying. Sorry, when I look at the documentation, yes. Which is yeah. Oh, I don't want to restart. I don't want to restart. My house studio is giving issues. So I wanted to look at the documentation. So to browse only on the next, uh, to browse only on the next run. But they also explained that we that we can make use of these functions that is coming from the utils. They set uh, uh they set breakpoints which works similarly, but instead of taking a function name, it takes a file, a file name and a line number and finds the appropriate function. It finds the appropriate function for you. It's, it's going to take a file name, which can be a script, the line number, then it's going to look for the appropriate function. They also explain that these two special function is similar to the word, the trace, which is set arbitrary code at any position in an ex existing function trace is occasionally useful when you're debugging code that, that you don't have the source for. To remove tracing from a function, we can use on trace. So once we use the on trace function, uh, we are going to remove uh, this uh, trace uh, from the function. So I think uh, that all for debug. If okay, this is just like uh, the call stack that I explained earlier on the call stack, which shows us uh, the 
uh, the sequence of calls that we made before we arrive at the before we encounter an error in our code. So this compares compares uh, the trace back, the wear recover, and the outlang functions. The different it shows that these are uh, different uh, tools. They have different call stack. Exactly. Let's take for instance. This is the trace back. You can see the sequence of call, which is start from the bottom. We are reading it from the bottom to the top. This makes a call to this. This calls this. This one calls A of B. This one make a call to I, which give us an error. But when we are using the where, we are starting from here down to, to here. So we can see that the sequence of calls, uh, the sequence of call for trace back, for where, for recover, and also the outline function, we can see that this sequence, uh, they are different. Like this, we have in one, two, three, four. This also we have in one. We have two, which is G of A, three here, yeah, which is H of B, four here, yeah, which is I of A. So for our lang functions, so we are just having global F of 10. We also have global G of A, global H of B, and also global H of A. So this shows uh, all the, the, the call stack. It shows that the call stack uh the sequence there there are there are difference uh there are differences uh this uh non-interactive uh debugging non-interactive debugging uh this section give us some useful tools when debugging we cannot explore interactively so they say sometimes when we use uh this function from call r we have the r which is the function, we have a list of one and two. They said it can be it can be useful because F will make a call to these two, one either one or two in a fresh session. They said we might want to double check for, for common issues. So in this, in this is the global environment difference. So that is what we need to know. Have you loaded different packages? So are uh, objects left from previous session causing differences? Then we need to also know that is the working directory different from the current uh, working directory in which uh, we are working in? Is the path environment variable which determine where external command like git are found different? We, we also need to know is the rlib environment variable which determine where library looks for packages different? So we need to be able to resolve this issue in order for us to really uh, understand uh, uh, what the cause, the call R functions is doing because say we might want to double check for all these common issues. We need to be able to well, resolve this in order for us to, to really have an understanding of what uh, the line is doing for the non interactive uh, debugging because this one is different from our normal interactive debugging where we can insert breakpoints where we can insert browser this one is different so i think this i was still trying to wrap uh, my head around this to really understand what the dom frame is doing maybe while we discuss i think uh you can also help me out because they say the dom frame is equivalent to recover for non-interactive code, it save a last dom.rda file in the working directory. Later, an interactive session, you can load last dom last dom.rda debugger to enter interactive uh, to enter interactive debugger with the same interface as recover. This lets you cheat interactive debugging code that was run non-interactively because this code is run non-interactively. So we have in bash R process, we have DOM and quits, which is a function. It has no arguments. DOM.frames, to.file, it should be true. Then quits status is equals to one. Then we have options. So when we have error in this case, it should be DOM and quits. Then we have to load last uh last because this 
dom dot frame to dot file to be true. I think it's saving this file. This line is saving this file. So here we are now loading last dom dot r. We are now loading last dom dot rda because the last dom dot rda we are now loading it. Then we we enter into uh we are, we enter into the debugger. So when we now try print debugging on this. If DOM frames doesn't help, a good call fallback is print debugging because this DOM frame, once we click on the debugger, this is going to open a, take us to our uh, debugging console whereby we can begin uh, to interact. Uh, we can begin to what interact uh, with this, uh, with our code. But they said, if this does not help us, we can use the print. We can use the print statements at each line. So this is a, like a function. It has one argument a. So cut. So this is like concatenate and print. We have g of a. We have g, which is a function. It has one argument. We have cut g of g. So this is going to concatenate and print everything that we have there. So this cat B, then this is going to also print this. We have H of B, we have H, which is a function that has one argument. So this is also going to print this. So if we execute F of 10, for the first F, we can see return F. The next, because the next G, this is going to what also return G. Uh, the next, uh, the next, which is, uh, which is, uh, which is, and it shows that B is equals to what? B is equals to, B is equals to what? 10. The next I has no input, it returns uh, 20. Because they also explain that print debugging is, is useful for compile code because it is, Uncommon for the compiler to modify your code to such an extent you can that you cannot figure out the root cause of uh, the debugger. So what this cat is doing is at any every line is going to print everything and returns uh, the results in the R console, which will make it easy for us to see what what each line of the function what they are doing, so that when we have error, we can know. Uh, where we we are going to to focus on in order uh, for us uh, to fix uh, that problem. So this other talk about uh, when we are working with the the R markdown. When we are working with R markdown file, maybe we, we said debugging code inside R markdown file. We got some special to first. We need to we need to switch to calling. We need to call. R markdown render, then we specify the path. We specify the path uh, to the R markdown file. Uh, and in order for us to do that, they do recommend we, in, our, in our setup, we should include this function, options, error, which is equals to function. We use sync and we also use recover because this sync is going to override the default uh, sync that is coming from the R markdown. So it's going to overwrite that sync. So it's going to ensure that every line is, is going to ensure that every line, the, all the error under every line in which we are encountering any error is going to print everything and send, send the results to, to our R console. And this uh, recover is going to recover on every error. This will generate no no sync to removing warning when can it have complete. You can safely ignore this warning if you simply want a trace back by setting this option R lang trace back or trace top environment option. This ensures you only see the trace back from your code instead of the function called by R by Armada and Kenneth. So that in that case, we, we set up, which we, we can modify the options in which we have already set above by using these options, how long 
stress stop environment. Then we said R lang current environment. Then we have options on error, which is still function. We are using the sync to override the default sync uh, from the from R markdown. Then we have print R lang trace back. Then we have bottom system dot frame uh, minus one simplify. System.frame minus one, but I do not understand what the system the system frame minus one. I do not really, I don't know if anybody has idea. I do not understand what that line is doing. Let me go back. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Um, um... I'm just um I'm going back to yeah. the notes. Do you have a, an example? Uh, you see, I, I was first looking at the that code and can you uh type like question mark things in, in our studio? Yeah. Okay, I think let me grab this. It's coming from here. That, that is a trick back. Not working, why? I will need to open. I will need to open a new R Studio. I need to restart. Let's say demo. Uh -huh. Maybe you can go to um, session and yes. then restart here on top is file edit code new plus in session uh, on the top of our studio bar. Okay. Okay, it's not working. All this. The sys frame uh, is the system. No, sys is uh, uh, okay. system. Uh, maybe if you do question mark sys dot frame, just question mark sys dot frame and so it's, it's coming from the outline. Yeah, system error. This a function to access the function called start. Yeah. <laughs> System per, uh, yes, system uh, frame. Oh, I make mistake is system frames. No, that's correct. System frame and which which is uh, this minus one is yes uh, specified with with which so which yeah. system frame uh, minus one. Yes, yes, yes. Framework. Yeah. The system framework. So I think it's the parent frame. So it looked like yeah. N was yeah, uh, I... the, the like the ancestor and the, the parent child hierarchy. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you very much. Uh, let's go back. Let's go back.
But what, so, sorry, what for me? Just, just can you do the same for for sync for the function sync? Just to see the the documentation. Okay. Because I've sync. I've heard of this this function but never use it. So um. Uh, it sends our outputs to a file. To a file. Didn't I also to a connection? That's an okay. interesting function. Yeah. Okay, so I think we can proceed. Yep. Okay, so for, I think we are here. Okay, I think we are through with here. So yeah, this non-error failure. So maybe this talks about how we can deal uh, with non-error failure there. And they explain that there are other ways of for a function to fail apart from throwing an error. First, they say the function may generate an unexpected warning. The easiest way to track down warning is to convert them into error with options. Warning is equals to two. So once we set these options with warning equals to two, so anytime, uh, there is a, anytime we are having this, it's going to convert it back uh, to, to error. We can, and we can also use the call stack with, with call stack like do with one restart. That is with one restart, regular debugging tools. When you do, do this, you see some extra calls uh, with restart and signal simple one and ignore this. There are internal function used to turn one into errors. It's, they do explain that we should ignore the signal simple warning because this, these are internal functions and they are used in to use to turn warning into errors. Then a function may generate an unexpected message. You, and we can use the outlang with a bot to turn this message into errors. So maybe for example, we have F, which is a function, it has G of G. Then G is also a function. It has message, which is I. Then we have F, and F is going to what? Print uh, the message. But when we say how long with about F, then we call the message is going to give us error. With about is not exported object from namespace, uh, how long. So, but when we long run how long last uh, trace on this, you can, you can see that it shows that error can't show last error because no error was recorded yet because it has not been able to, uh, to record this. And they explain that a function might never return this return. Oh, sorry, my connection, I lost. That's okay. I think I was almost in the last part. Okay, I said the, they said the worst scenario is that your code might crash completely, leaving you with no way to interactive debug your code. This indicates a bug in compile C or C, C++ code. It shows that in that case, we are having a bug. So and in that case, it will be hard for us uh, to fix that in the last part is just like a link I added uh, to some resources. I think what well, this is about Jenny Brown. I think Jenny Brown and Jean Esther and also hardly video on minimal reprex uh, with Shiny. I think uh, that, is, that is all for the part. I think we have talked about, uh, we talk about how to debug using browser, using breakpoints, and also how to deal with bug when we are working with the R markdown file. I think that is all I got for the chapter.
Hello. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for the presentation. Okay. So, sorry, I came into the presentation a, a, a bit late. Ap apologies for that. But I, I'm curious, is, has anyone used any of these tools in practice? And if so, any favored tools? Uh, in May, I have tried out in the browser. And I used the browser. Uh, that was when I also I was working uh, with a shiny avatar. I worked with the browser. I used to work a lot with the also the trace back. I'm really familiar with the browser and trace back. Yeah, I've used I've used browser as well. Um, I like that better than. Um, the interactive button in our studio, the like set breakpoints or or whatever it is. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like it's really helpful for Shiny, especially like seeing what you have in the environment at that point. Uh, I feel like that's helpful. And non and non Shiny as well. So here's a silly question is, is, is browser, so, so in the discussion in the book, it, it seemed to link browser to some parts of uh, RStudio. I mean, it's kind of showing the, the, the commands and then the user interface for executing those commands. Um, is, is browser just a standard function that's available and other places you might be using R? Like, let's say, for example, you have an R terminal in, in VS Code. That's my understanding. Um, those buttons are just uh, helpful, I think. I, I think you would be able to use browser and like VS code, but I've not tested that, so I can't 100% say for sure. Yeah, I think you can also use browser. Yeah, VS Code, you can work with browser also. It will work. All right. OK, now uh, for, no, it, it's all new uh, to me. So I've uh, seen this function in tidy mode in, uh, in Shiny. Uh, mastering shiny book, but um, you know it's a bit complicated to me. Yet, so I look forward to future application. I see that 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 that's useful, absolutely. But uh, okay. So I think we um, we can meet. Hello. 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 Hi. Okay. Yeah. So um, I think um, that we we meet next uh, next week. And um, it. Would be me next week. No, I'm just. Can you hear my dog? <laughs> just don't know what, what he's saying. Okay. So I'm just uh, uh, sharing uh, uh, my screen for a second. Okay. Can you all see it? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So next 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 week uh, uh, would be me measuring performance, then improving performance on the twenty first. If that's fine to everyone, and then we have like two weeks uh, break. 
And then I've put down my name here for the last chapter, but I'm absolutely uh, in need of some help. So anyone who would like to uh, like share the chapter or uh, do any like uh, provide some suggestions or uh, it's very welcome. Okay, maybe, yeah, we're all done. So congratulations to everyone. We missed like three weeks and we're done <laughs> with the book. So it's a great achievement. Thank you very much for attending the, this session. Yeah, that's great. Uh, thank you, Rafemi, and uh, I'll see you everyone next week. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. See you Sounds next good. Week. Thank Bye, you. everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.